All right, it looks like I'm live. I was having technical difficulties with the stream yard there. So we're going to just kick this off right now with anybody who's watching this after the live stream actually happened. Here are two questions I'd like answered. One, what kind of phone or software are you using right now? So for instance, I'm running an iPhone 13 Pro and the software that I'm currently running on it or the operating system, I guess, is more accurate is 17.1.2. So we know where we all are. Are we most up to date on our phones? And two, what kind of photo editing app do you use on your smartphone? So those are the two main questions. Tonight, what we're gonna be doing for everybody else, we're gonna go through what I've got and I'm gonna see if I can help you guys understand a lot of the settings that are in the camera mode on my iPhone. I think most of this will work for Droid as well, but LBZ and I were discussing it on Twitter, and it looks like there's one mode that I really dig that not everyone with a Droid is going to have. But if you have manual mode, you might have it. We'll see. That's at least what it looked like via the Google. So what do we have here? Let's pop in and see what everybody's doing. Let's see, you're early for once. What's up, LBC? And I was late. Not like late, late, I guess. I won't I won't hurt myself too bad over that one. Harry, what's up, man? Got mutton junkyard. Nice. You have those ready to go? Got those ready to shoot? Cause yeah, those are those are figures I need to pick up. LBC. Cool. Yep, yep. You you'll need to get them. I'll need to get them. We all need mutton junkyard. Now. Uh, I finally got yeah. LBZ got his amazing Yamaguchi midnight or midnight moon night mid last week. And that figure looks insanely good. And those shots, my friend, those are looking good as well. Nicely done. Samsung Ultra S20. Harry, is that the most recent one by any chance? Do you know? Just curious. See Samsung 22 Plus, but I think we went through it and I read more about it. Sweet. Let's see. I just ordered my Rebel Tech Moon Knight. Good man, Gregory. Take some shots. We all need to know what that thing looks like. I mean, LBZ did. We have some shots, but it never hurts to see a whole lot of shots. Those are those are my favorite part of this whole thing. Very nice. All right. So I figured what we could do. I want to start, I'm not the best currently, I'm working on it, but so far I'm not the best when it comes to explaining real simple steps. So I'm going to start with very basic stuff, like getting into the app and stuff like that, just because I want to make sure there's a solid foundation there. I've told this story before. I had somebody that worked for me and I taught her how to do how to create a white background in Photoshop, cutting out some stuff and all that. And she kept getting frustrated because she couldn't make it happen. I kept getting frustrated because she couldn't make it happen. And later on, she and I are discussing it. And I'm looking at the sheet that I typed up of instructions for her. And I missed like three or four of the most basic steps that would have made it a whole lot easier. So that's why I'm going to do it this way, kind of try and do a hands-on, trying to take it a little slow here. So. What I've got, I don't have mutton junk yet, but I do have rock and roll. He was the star of today's photo as well. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun with him. And I'll use shots of him as the example. All right, Harry, let's see. <laughs> Dude, I am so tempted to get the amazing Yamaguchi Spider-Man. I'm tempted by the new Batman. I'm tempted by that Moon Knight. A lot of their more recent stuff. If I were more into anime type figures too, I'd be tempted to get a lot of the other stuff too. Like I think the Supergirl looks awesome. I just don't have anything in the collection that matches her. I think the Superman looks awesome. There's amazing Yamaguchi's doing some killer stuff. I need to I need to load up on those. LBZ. Oh, man, he's nice as well. His amazing Yamaguchi Spidey 2.0 was in his top five. That's because everything I see of that figure, the guy looks amazing. 
gonna need that. Let's see. I know, I know, Harry. Why do you think I need mine? All those hands. That's like necessary in junkyard as a different head and all that stuff. These are things, these are things that need to make it into the collection. Last year. <laughs> That's right. 2023. Gotcha. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and in order to do this, I had to set my display settings really low, so it might take me a little bit to find things on here. So I'm just opening the camera app now. Nope, I was going to, and then I got a notification. And my camera app's, of course, at the very top. So we've just got, ah, all right. There you go. You can kind of see it. The screen works. Oh, good Lord, it's looking at me now. That's two of me. You guys don't want that. So you can see I'm in, there's basically two modes, three modes. I didn't think of, I didn't think of the panoramic. But there's basically, let's see here. There you go. You've got photo on the bottom there, down in this menu here. And you should have that good to go. That one's probably your basic that you shoot. And to the right of that, you've got portrait mode, which is the mode that I'm most excited about. And then to the right of that, you've got panoramic. And panoramic, you just click the button here. I'll take a quick shot here. Whee! go good and slow and you can see how i'm just spinning around a little bit here and that's what you get for a panoramic shot is something kind of like that when you use panoramic so it's not something that generally applies to figure photography for me maybe you guys can make it work and maybe now that i say that maybe i'll try it for a shot this coming week just to see what happens but there's your basic setting there get rid of that and then you've got different, when you're in portrait mode anyway, you have these different light settings. You can see there, maybe you can see there, it says normal light in that yellow bar. You might have that on your phone as well. And then you go one click to the right, and we've got a different kind of light set up. I gotta see, like I said, it's kind of dark here, trying to see what we've got, studio light is that one. There's just different ways that we can set this up. So how about I do this? I'm gonna shoot rock and roll real quick in this portrait mode. And I'm gonna shoot him, let's see. I'll shoot him in this crazy mode here, which was stage light. And so basically it picked up on anything that was clear in the image with the portrait mode, like I said. Now what portrait mode allows you to do is control the f-stop or the aperture so that you can blur the background quite a bit. And that's kind of a look you get with one of those different light settings. I think for the most part we'll be using normal light settings. So let me head back to that, go back to the normal one. And yeah, there you go. Portrait mode, natural light. So let's make sure, look in the chat, make sure everybody's following me here. I don't want to get too far ahead of anything. Let's see. Oh, I forgot about Thor. Amazing Yamaguchi Thor is coming out at the end of the month. Oh, man. Yep. That figures. All right. You know, full screen. I know. I don't like it either. Let's see. Let's see. Order them. Oh, nice. That Mythic Legion's bear is going to make for some awesome shots when that thing comes out. I expect to see some from you, Harry. This will be fun stuff. I should do that panoramic with my desk once I organize it. It's chaos right now. Dude, that would be awesome, though. Like your desk, probably the way that you've got it set up standing all those things up around it like just just stand all the figures on the desk that would be sweet hope the world is still here in the year or i am yeah when the things release i got you oh well we'll make it same all right all right so we've got the portrait mode there anybody following along what i'm going to do right now i'm going to take a shot of roadblock here or roadblock rock and roll 
I sold my roadblock. Didn't come with enough hands. And in the background, I've got I've got turtles. The turtles hang out on my desk because all the paint that I need or all the paint that they have is necessary stuff. And I don't want it to get all beat up when I put them in something like a drawer. All right. So here we are with portrait mode. You can see that the background's a little blurry there. And what I had to do is rock and roll's pretty close to me. So let me show you just setting up a shot. You can see in the bottom corner there, if you've got the same phone, there's a little 1X going on. And what that 1X is, is it's basically the zoom. If you hit 3X and you're super close to something, it's not going to let you take the picture. Same with 1X, actually. It'll tell you to move further back. And so you want to do that when it tells you to do that. Otherwise, the editing tools won't work, and the editing is where the aperture can happen. So there's that. Now, let's go back into the photo itself. All right. Let's see here. Harry, what you got? Samsung has a new app expert raw. Is that what it's called? Because that's pretty sweet. Expert raw. Okay. And is that that's actually made by Samsung? That's not like a third party app or anything? Because <clears throat> I want to check all that stuff out. So here's portrait mode. And if you have a droid that allows you to mess with the aperture settings in editing, uh, that's what I'm going to start doing right now. So first, though, we'll show you uh, hit edit. And then I'm going to hit the little crop icon down there, which is it is kind of tough to see, which is insane right now. And then to control which kind of crop you use, if you're using an iPhone, it's that one right there. It's kind of a rectangle with a rectangle inside of it. So click on that, and now there is uh, there's original, which is just whatever proportion the shot was taken in. There's free form, Let's see, there's square, and there's wallpaper. Square obviously is gonna make it a square. Wallpaper will probably make it so it's 1920 by 1080. I didn't look into wallpaper. My bad. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is leave it at free form. And I'm just dragging things in a little bit so I'm a little closer to rock and roll. And hitting done. So that's what I did there with just cropping. Quick and easy, quick and simple. Now you see how blurry the background is here. What I'm going to do now because I shot that in, let's see, because I shot that in the aperture mode or with a portrait mode, you can see this little square ah, right there. That's showing where the focus is at. You push it where you want the focus to be and I just put it right on rock and roll's head. So now I'm dragging the f-stop, the aperture, which is down there. I dragged it all the way to the left and that's one way to play is drag these things all the way to the left and all the way to the right so you can kind of see what they do. So that made the background even blurrier. And then if I drag it all the way, it gets a lot clearer. And that's where I have a lot of fun with portrait mode is editing the aperture. So that's why I wanted to show that part is it's just a blast to mess with. Now I'm seeing, see I got a text saying they couldn't find the crop. So let me see if we can find that a little easier here real quick. So let's go to edit. Crop first is down here. It's the thing that kind of almost looks like a frame. And then up top, it is what I just highlighted. It's basically two rectangles like with one smaller rectangle inside the other. And that'll make it so you have all the crop and crop options. So, okay, that's basically portrait mode and why you would use portrait mode 
for all this stuff. Let's catch up with the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's see, Tragic Hero. Glad you could make it, man. And thanks for showing up. Whew. All right. Harry, it's a download. Okay, thank you, sir. That is Expert Raw for Samsung. These are things I need to keep track of. Let's see, oh yeah, I love my raw mode. From there you can use Lightroom, Photoshop for the raw images. Oh yeah. Let's see, now you're speaking my language. This is where I have all the fun. I love just Lightroom. It's automatically there when I open Photoshop up. Let's see. The Samsung S23 Ultra. Okay. And those are all like those are all newer models, right, guys? Like 22, 20, 23, all that. That's what I'm curious about. Because I just want to make sure I don't want to leave people. So like, <laughs> like before I got this, I had an iPhone 7. Sorry if you have an iPhone 7. You're probably kind of host. But I don't want to leave too many people so they can't follow along and try and mess with this stuff a little bit. All right. So we've got our man here. We've got rock and roll. Now, I'm going to mess with a little more here. Here we've got different modes for what you can make the image be as far as like editing. So this is normal. This is how it looked out of the camera. And the way I found those, by the way, was in this lower menu that says filters. So we've got the normal. Then if we do this, we've got vivid. And I'm just going to go through these real quick before I show you what all to mess with. We've got vivid warm. Vivid cool. I wonder if I can. Nope. <laughs> no chance. I was going to try and do that right there. Dramatic. Woo! I smell a Batman photo. Dramatic warm. And warm is basically, warm just means it'll be a little more yellow, cool, which this is, dramatic cool. That just means it'll be a little more blue. And then we've got various black and white colors or options here. That one's mono. This one is called silver tone. And this one is called noir. I always like a noir look. But with this kind of shot, it doesn't really matter. It mostly boils down to your personal preference. But again, you've got, for instance, here's Vivid I've got on. And you've got the slider that if you drag the slider all the way, it takes you just back to your original image. Now I'm going to try and do this online or like here so you can see it. And then, let's see. Oh, I was close. And then there it is, just a little different, just shooting it all the way up to the vivid, all the way to the extreme side of vivid. So on one side, it's just the normal shot. On the other side, it's all the way as vivid as you can possibly be. Another one that actually here, I'll show the, we'll show a black and white one because I think that gets the point across a little better. Here is the mono that I showed you earlier. So that is all the way black and white. And now we take it down a little bit. And you can see there's just a little, it's a slight black and white filter over everything. And then we keep taking it down and we're right back to normal. So those are just little adjustments that you can make that are fun to do that I'm a fan of. Let me see what we've got going on here because I've got now text all these other things can't find where to crop no okay i've got mom trying to figure things out too i tried to show oh wait that was an earlier text i think i think i i think i helped her out there um okay and then we've got sorry i've got these notifications coming in too let's see all right i think we're set now so we've gone through portrait mode and then we've also gone through, I got to gotta hit edit. We've gone through the filters themselves. So just messing with rock and roll. Let me check the chat, make sure everybody's still there. Everybody's good to go. All right. What have we here? 
Tragic Hero. Yeah, it's a newer phone, but what are you saying goes for all, but what you are saying goes for all phone settings, such as aperture, ISO, and speed. I know enough to be dangerous by all means, not a professional. <laughs> right. This is true. This is true. But I think some of them, like ISO seems to be pretty, at least on the iPhone, it seems to be pretty self, self-contained. self Like there's not much I can do with that. And there's not tons I can do with shutter speed with it either. So one thing I can mess with with portrait mode is the aperture, a little bit of what's going on in the background and a little bit of the blur. So when it comes to cameras, yeah, I can mess with all that stuff. iPhone, I think it keeps it simpler, but I'm okay with that. that that's helpful for me because I just want it to work. All right, let's see. Going to put my headphones in and get some chores done. <laughs> we'll chime in when I can. Awesome, man. Thanks. All right. Yep. This kind of this feels experimental almost, like an experimental live stream to see what we've got going on here. All right. Ooh. Uno mas. Really? Dang. No pro mode on iPhone. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. Like I keep hearing that Droid's got. No, I'm. That's not what I'm saying. This is the first time I'm saying this. I keep hearing that Android has all those functions. And I think LBZ actually sent a screen grab and showed me his today. And I'm like, oh, man, because I was a little jealous with all that stuff. So, yeah, when it comes to iPhones, all I can play with is the aperture. And I can only play with that when it comes to portrait mode. That's why I'm really stoked about that. So, so anybody with a droid might be watching this going, oh, oh, no, they, they really need to catch up. Anyway, okay, so. We've got this shot with rock and roll here that we'll play with a little bit more. That I'll play with a little bit more. I hate it when I do that. And now we're just going to mess with, I'm just going to mess with color settings a little bit here. So the first setting, I can just hit auto and it does all this stuff. It makes all the adjustments automatically. But that's no fun. So. The first set here, the first adjustment is exposure. So again, go all the way to the right and you get that kind of blown out a bit. Go all the way to the left and you get almost nothing. Exposure basically just brightens or darkens the image a little bit. So don't worry, you find the happy medium, you find whichever one works for you and you go from there. The next one is brilliance, and I actually had to look up what brilliance does. I mean, I can see it, but I didn't know how to explain it. Basically, what they say is brilliance pulls in the highlights, and it kind of brightens the darks and adds a little bit of contrast. So there, if we go all the way to the right, we get that. And if we go all the way to the left, we get that. So yeah, brilliance is kind of, it's sort of, I mean, they're all their own thing. So I'm trying to come up with the right way to say brilliance is like this. It is kind of its own thing. And I want to make a brilliance adjustment here on rock and roll. So I went to the right and I added some. So the next one is highlights. Now, I know highlights. All highlights will do is basically take the lighter parts of the image and either make them lighter or make them darker, depending on which direction you go on the phone. So if you go left, the highlights all got a little darker. If you go all the way right, they got quite a bit lighter. So it's just playing around a little bit. I don't think, well, yeah, I'll add... I'll add a little bit on highlights, so we got some there. And then shadows, that's just going to make the darker areas darker or lighter, depending on which direction you go. Now, shadows is crazy. If you go here, let me show. Here's the original. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. All right, so you go all the way, and shadows gets light. Or got darker, actually. I just couldn't see it on the screen that well. But then you go all the way this way, and then it got way lighter. So it just messes with the shadow component of the phone. 
I don't need to do anything with that one. Contrast is one that I think almost everybody messes with. So you can see that it takes the lights, takes all the colors, and just makes it so that they're very contrasty against each other. Or not so much. Okay, I'm starting to figure this out a little bit. I think I can do this a touch. And I did want to mess with contrast. Brightness is just going to make the whole thing a little brighter. So like that. Or make the whole thing a little darker. Pretty self-explanatory on brightness. It's not too, not too much of a mystery. Then you have the black point, which I always dig. How it makes it so the black areas get really black or the darker areas get black. Or it just goes back to the original. So it's not such a big deal either. Now we've got saturation. I'm almost done through this. And then we'll take a break here, which you can desaturate it and go all the way to black and white. Or you can completely saturate it and get just insane with the color. That didn't go completely. There we go. There's completely saturated. So I'll probably saturate it some, but it doesn't need to go that far. And then there's what saturation does is it saturates or desaturates the whole image. What vibrance does is it kind of takes the, let me, let me play for a sec here just to make sure I'm going to get that explanation right. It sort of takes the areas that have just are kind of close to the base color. For instance, the greens. Look at the greens on the turtle's feet back there a little bit as I do this. So it takes the colors that are already massively, like that are really colorful and just amplifies those, whereas saturation kind of gets everything. And that one's, that one's kind of tough to explain, which drives me nuts. As I said earlier with vivid cool and vivid warm, we're now on the warmth one. So if you go all the way to the right, you're gonna get a lot of added yellow. All the way to the left, you're going to get a lot of added blue. And I don't think, there we go, that's all the way to the left. And let's make sure that's all the way to the right. So, yeah, that's that's all warmth is. Warmth isn't that bad. Whew, there's a lot. And tint, actually, let me get rid of some of the warmth here. Tint is basically one way you'll add magenta, the other way you'll add green. So go right, you're adding some magenta. Go left, you're adding some green. I guess it's actually right on the thing, but you're dragging your finger that one way. Sharpness is more, you make the whole thing a little, I don't even know how to explain it really, to be honest. You almost make it so it's more gravelly. I'm not sure how to explain this one, guys. It sharpens the image. So it's sort of, I don't know, like one of them, sharpen actually kind of messes with the edges, I would say. So you look at the edge there, and maybe that's easy to see up close. And that was all the way sharpened. And there it is. Let's try and do this. Yeah, that one's kind of a pain to see online. Mess with Sharpen. You'll kind of get a better idea of what the effect is. And then Definition kind of does the whole thing instead of just sharpening edges. But those two are kind of tough to see on here. So make sure and noise reduction will be tough to see as well. Noise is basically the way pixels are set up. So it's going to be like there's a layer of pixels on the photo that kind of obscure it from being great. Noise reduction sort of eliminates some of that layer. It won't ever do it completely. But the reason you need noise reduction is if you were to shoot in really low light or things are moving really fast and all that and the ISO can't keep up, all that stuff. That's why you mess with noise reduction. And vignette just adds black around the edges. 
or white around the edges. And I think that's it that we'll talk about tonight, just because just because I'm having a tough time looking at it and trying to figure out the best way to pull all this off. So there's that, but there's always plenty more to talk about, I am sure. Tragic Hero, I really think you need to look into the Samsung, but I'd still like to know your technique. The technique is mostly portrait when it comes to iPhone, but yes, I do need to get a droid for sure. Samsung is droid, I believe. Yeah, Galaxy, all that stuff. Definitely need to pick those up. Tragic. I'm still here to learn. Fantastic. I appreciate it, man. Ah. Spaded one. What's all this thing? Hey, I'm just trying to show people how to do the whole photo thing. Good Lord, I got way too close to the monitor there. Yeah, just trying to show the whole photo thing on the phones. Now, people have Samsungs, and that's tough for me because I don't know my droids as well as I'd like. So what I've been playing with is the iPhone. We basically went through shooting in portrait mode. Then we went through the different filters, and we went through a lot of the color adjustments that you can do. So I was hoping that that would work out for a lot of this. I think it probably does. I think that most people are going to get the most out of everything with those. With portrait mode, it's always crazy because it feels to me like I still haven't quite dialed in exactly why I'd shoot with 3x versus 1x, except when it comes to distance. And I will say 3x, it gets to the point where things look a little more fuzzy around the edges. And I think for me, the bright time to use 3x instead of 1x on the portrait mode is when I'm shooting a big group of figures. Overall, I prefer using my camera because I have a lot more control with that. But it sounds like if I had a droid, I'd have quite a bit of control with everything else as well. So yeah, that would be that would be good. Also, guys, check this out. It's the first time I noticed this. My chair right now is perfectly straight to whatever like it's it's totally straight to the desk which is it, the back of it should be parallel to the wall look at how the back of my chair is crooked i hadn't noticed that until tonight wowza no wonder i'm all messed up when i try to move i don't even know what that means all right Back to the chat, LBZ. I just need to start using Photoshop and Lightroom. I just like doing slight adjustments on my phone. Yeah, slight adjustments are probably, they're where it's at for the most part. I like looking all the way to the left and all the way to the right just to get a better idea of what, the, what it does. And then sometimes I'll push the boundaries depending on what I'm shooting. Like plunderlings just lend themselves to be crazy colorful. So I tend to mess a lot with the saturation. So like I usually push that as far as I can. I'll push vibrance as far as I can. And then I'll also use the vivid filter just because I'm like, these things are really, they should be ultra colorful. So I mess with all that stuff specifically with them because that's where the fun comes in. But yeah, I'm trying to think of all the other just little things that we've got going here. But while I'm trying to think, let's see what we got. Mr. Madsen. I shoot almost everything with my iPhone on 3X. Yeah, so you use the portrait. Excellent. So when's the last time you tried shooting on 1X? Because what I'm doing, what I did here was I have rock and roll to my left. And I had portrait mode going on. And if I went 3X, I would be too close. But I swear that when I go 1X, things are just clearer around the edges and it could just be me but it just looks it looks a little clearer and let me try and let me just crop this real quick so you can see what i'm looking at here because i'm going to focus on his head there we go and that's shooting with one x 
and I feel like shooting with 3x, like if I push them further away from me, I just feel like it's a little fuzzier. So like if you're shooting maybe one guy, maybe 1x is the way to go. But like I was saying, group shots, I think 3x, you almost have to do it by necessity. But I'd be curious to know what you're thinking about it, too, because I know you take a lot of group shots. Spaded one. I've been using the SnapSpeed app on iPhone to edit photos. Okay, you're the second. I've heard a few people talk about SnapSpeed, I guess. I was going to say second person. I've heard several. So I need to look into, I need to look into SnapSpeed, especially, does it, what all does SnapSpeed control? Like what, obviously I'm not sure it could control things like ISO and shutter speed just because my gut would be that that's built into the phone itself and that an app couldn't mess with, but I could be wrong. So let me know what snap speed does that maybe the basic camera settings don't because I'd like to play and I want to make sure I'm, I'm actually working on a new figure photo guide and I want to make sure that a lot of smartphone stuff is in there as well. Did anyone get a chance to look at Mezco 112 on 112? I haven't yet, but I was told they give free figs for good photos. Well, that might be that might be a good thing to look into. I'll tell you, I was trying to keep up, but I really didn't do a great job with it. It looked like they had another, I think the one I recognized was the one that came with a huge mech suit, the one that looked like Mork from Mork and Mindy that had that suit going on they made the colors darker or they made it like a black suit instead of a red suit or something like that. I don't know what else though. So if anybody in the chat knows what's up, let tragic know. Cause I did not pay attention. Like I should have probably, let's see. I think on Insta. Okay, cool. And what do we have from Mick dysentery? Snapspeed has a bunch of different options, some basic magic eraser stuff and tons more filters. Okay, cool, cool. So a lot more filters. That would be fun to mess with. So, you know, when I'm done with this, I'll be downloading or grabbing. Do they even say down? Yes, I think you do still download. I'll be downloading Snapspeed for the iPhone because that'll be awesome. Mr. Matson. I use 1x if I'm in a tight spot. 3x is closer to what my eye picks up for the shot. 1x seems too far back for most of what I want. Yeah, I can see that. Like if you're shooting a big group shot and you try and do 1x, things are going to get a little, yeah, it's going to get a little messy. Like even that headshot I just showed you of rock and roll, I took that and I really had to crop it in tight because the original image was going to be more like, oh man, I don't even have, you know what? I think I can go to this and edit and revert back to the very original image. Here we go. Yeah. The original image for rock and roll, the one I showed you would have been something more like that. So I can see where you're saying that about one X. I might try, try shooting like two or three figures where the focus is on one of them and then crop them fairly tight and, or crop them however you want to crop them and look at where the focus is on the figures and see what you think about the edges. Like for me, 3X just gets a little fuzzy, but it's also because I'm shooting a bunch of figures generally when I try it. And you're in that kind of happy medium where you're not shooting tons at a time. So just curious. See, Mezco does from time to time, they feature photos all through the week. Harry, I have seen Mezco feature those photos and people take some incredible shots when it comes to those Mezco, Mezco figures. LBZ, what aspect ratio do you use for your picks? When it comes to, mm, I'm trying to think, usually when it comes to a phone shot, I just keep it free form. When it comes to posting like what you guys see on Twitter and on Instagram and everything, I believe it's 16 by nine because I wanted to keep it, I wanted to keep it so it was widescreen, but not so widescreen that it still fit on Instagram without having to edit too much. So really, I did it because of laziness. But I think today's aspect ratio, it can go crazy. Like, I think it's almost 2.1 to 1 or 2.2 to 1, some kind of crazy thing. But yeah, 16 by 9 is what I do. Whew. And when it comes, yeah, like I was saying here, when it comes to this... I'm wondering, actually, guys, 
I shot that. And we looked at edit, crop, and we saw that one of the options was wallpaper. So let me go to wallpaper and see what we get. Yeah, that's what happens if I click wallpaper. Weird. Okay, I'm going to hit done. Now I'm going to see. Ah, okay, so wallpaper from the phone, oddly enough, goes to the phone. So it's not wallpaper like I would think of for a background for a desktop or for a laptop or anything like that. But, hey, I just learned things. And there are aspect, yeah, aspect ratios at the end of wallpaper. It's just I shoot it how I shoot it, and then I crop it how I crop it when it comes to the phone itself. So there's not too much to worry about there for me. I don't get too nuts. But if I did want to get nuts, let's see. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. All right. So we got him shot. Let's go in. Crop. Let's look at some of these aspect ratios, see what we get. Yeah, yeah, I really just shoot whatever the default is most of the time, but I do sometimes shoot in 16 by 9 too. It just depends on what the situation calls for. Like when I'm shooting on here, if we just have the screen, there's that arrow up top, and I'll click that, and that allows me to change the aspect ratio but it looks like it only allows me to change it. Let's see here. Yeah, it's only going to allow me to change it in photo mode. And so I can change that in photo mode to 16, let's see, <laughs> 16 by 9 right there. And then that nice and widens everything out. But <laughs> I've gotten so used to portrait mode. Like, basically, I use my camera unless I'm going to use portrait mode, which is nuts. Let's see. Okay. There was all that talk. Now, tragic, what have you. Is there a way to, let's see, lasso an image and add to the image on iPhones? I have not found that. Obviously, we can do that with Photoshop, but I haven't found it on an iPhone. And so I don't think so. Let me go in here real quick and see if I see something. I can set raw. I can do, let's see, if I hit the top arrow. I don't think so. I don't think there's any kind of like grabbing sort of deal. There is the one way, there is a way to shoot, like it's one of the light settings where you shoot and you just get a black background for all the stuff that wasn't totally in focus. So what you could do is you could take a picture of a figure that with just the figure being in focus against a black background and you could copy that into Photoshop and set the mode to screen and see what you could get. You'd still have to mask quite a bit out of whatever was underneath it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But, yeah, I, I haven't found anything at all that's like a lasso tool. Does that happen on the Samsung? Because if it does, I definitely need a droid. Let's see, yeah, man. It's all, all this stuff. The one thing that all this can do is pretty cool. I mean, I love what phones can do these days just because... They didn't used to be able to do all that stuff. Like you would take a picture and it would be just crazy grainy on one of those smaller screens. And it just wasn't as much fun to shoot. I didn't like it. Okay, Samsung. Got it. Thank you, sir. That's, uh, that's not cool. Because now that makes me realize I really do need. Like everybody has told me that Droid is ahead of iPhone when it comes to basically everything technology-wise. But there's so many iPhones out there that I thought, okay, let's talk about this with the iPhone. I have the iPhone and everything else. But you just can't play as much, it sounds like, as you can when it comes to the droids. And I'd like to be able to play a little more. So, yeah, I'm kind of 
kind of sad that I don't get to play quite as much as you lucky droid users, you. There is there is an app for everything, Harry. There's an app for that. What was that from? Oh, uh, I should know these things. <laughs> yes, there is. I wonder, maybe there's an app for the lasso tool on the Photoshop or on the iPhones. Who all here, guys? Here's a here's a question. Does anybody <laughs> here's a question? Like I'm announcing my questions now. Does anybody else use Photoshop? I mean, Tragic Hero sounds like you do. But does anybody else have it that they are using it quite a bit for their photos or anything like that? I'd like to know because one of the filters, one of the things I've been playing with an awful lot when it comes to Photoshop is the selective color adjustment layer. It brings so much more life to a photo than what I was doing before. Before, if you have Photoshop, you might know I was playing with curves to try and pop out colors and things like that. And it just didn't do what selective color can do. And the reason I'm asking is I would like to do some kind of selective color tutorial. I know I touched on it in one of my earlier tutorials, but I think it's an awesome, awesome tool and really adds a ton to all kinds of photos. So anyway, that's why I'm asking if anybody else uses Photoshop and plays with it. See, you're limited on apps, but I enjoy your knowledge and photography. I am very uh, limited on Apple. Yeah, I am very limited on Apple. But thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I'll keep trying to dish it out whenever I can. Any kind of, uh, any kind of notes I can think of for everybody. And I keep trying to think, what is there? Okay. Here's something, because I'm just at the beginning stages of the new action figure photography guide. After, of course, you answer whether or not you guys use Photoshop, what are things that you would like to see in a figure photography guide that would be, I guess to narrow it down, more specific to actually action figures themselves? Like, I'm going to put a posing section in there, but is there anything else you can think of? Because I want to make sure that this thing is all encompassing. Like, this is going to be the toy photography book, I think, or action figure photography guide, I suppose. Just what I'm envisioning. I want it to be all the things for all the people. Let's see, Fallen Gemini, nice to see you. I don't think, have you shown up on the chats before? If not, welcome. And if, if you have, my memory, it's clearly failed me at this moment in time. But thank you. Thank you for stopping by. And I'm glad you used Photoshop. How long have you been using it? Just so my questions, I want to know. I like knowledge from everybody if I can find it. Photoshop Elements, Harry. Photoshop Elements is pretty sweet. It does a lot of what the main deal does. Not quite as much, but it's pretty, it's pretty good. I'm not, I'm not upset at all with that. LBZ snaps, Snapseed has curves. I use that sometimes. Okay. All right. So Snapseed does have some of those. Some of those elements, which is pretty awesome. I like that. Some of those Photoshop elements. I need to use my DLSR more. Let's see. And my phone less. Well, you know, you might. It might be more fun. It just depends. It really, like, I can't take, I guess I can't take, like, I can't have as much control as everybody with a droid can. So, I'm curious now to just play with a droid to see how it compares to an actual camera. And keep in mind, my camera is pretty old too. So some of the more current technology might even make cameras better than the phone. But maybe today the phone is better than the camera I have. So these are all things I need to mess with too. It's, all, it's a learning experience for all of us, gang. LBZ. Is selective color layer where you can have just certain colors show selective color is like so you have the color channel so you've got cyan magenta yellow and black and it's on sliders and then up top you've got so this is where yes you can have certain it's not so much that you're having certain colors show it's that you're selecting what to do with certain colors so like the drop down has reds, yellows, greens, magenta, yellow, all that stuff. You drop that down and like you'll select red, for instance. 
and say you want red to be more towards cyan or more towards yellow or whatever, you just move the slider that way and it affects all the reds in the image. And same with all the other colors and all that. And obviously CMYK, the opposite of cyan, if we're just thinking color wheels and all that, you know, cyan and red isn't perfect for that, but the opposite of cyan is red. So if you move the slider to the right, you're gonna get more cyan. If you move it to the left, you'll get more red. With yellow, let's see, or with magenta, I'm sorry, you're gonna move it more to the right, you're gonna get magenta. You move it left, you're gonna get green. And then if you go with yellow, you move it to the left or to the right, you're going to get yellow, move it to the left, you're going to get more blue. So, and then black, you move it to the right, you're going to get more black, you move it to the left, you're going to get more white. So what that does is allow you to just make those adjustments for every single color on the image. Oh, and there's also neutrals. Neutrals is a lot of fun to play with. So yeah, that's, that's what selective color does. I'm trying to think of the best way to explain that stuff in the simplest terms possible because sometimes I, I tend to over explain. Tragic. If you can photo edit a lightsaber going through or chopping a stormtrooper. Oh man, I did a lightsaber tutorial video. And all it is really, what you would want to do, and I might be able to explain this real quick here, is you have the lightsaber. And some of them are actually shaped so that you can get that swinging effect. Some of the figures themselves have lightsabers like that. But if you can't, all you need to do is like sort of draw, like with a selection tool, for instance, maybe draw a triangle with a slightly curved end or curved edge to simulate the swinging. And then bring the triangle back and set the feather to one or two with that triangle, make sure that's on its own layer, fill the triangle with white or a really light color close to the color of the lightsaber. And then you do the outer glow a little bit and see what you get. Some of this, like sometimes I'm thinking when it comes to the perspective, maybe it should be a little more extreme. Maybe there should be more to outer glow or then just outer glow, but give that a shot first and see what you think. And I'll probably end up making something in the future so I can show more of a swinging lightsaber through a stormtrooper's head. That's just going to be a pop off a stormtrooper head. Maybe you attach it or like have a piece of wire with some putty on it to make sure it's just standing there like it's just fallen off. Drag the wire down. You mask the wire. Take a couple shots. All that stuff. All that stuff that if you're playing with Photoshop, you probably know some of that. But whatever you don't know, I'm happy to help. So I'll try to try to get that going. In uh, action figure photography guide specifically, though, that might be something that I should do. I should have like a lightsaber tutorial because so many of us have those. Fallen on and off for a decade or two. Nice, nice. That's all right. Tonight, obviously, you're on when it comes to the Photoshop. <clears throat> Let's see, tragic. DSLR are the best. I have a Nikon D20, old but still great. Yeah, man, I've got a, let's see, I have a Canon EOS 20D. That thing came out in like, I started using it in 2006, so my assumption is it was made in 2005. So it's a little long in the tooth, but it's still serving its purpose. What it's doing right now, is the battery itself isn't staying as secure as I'd like. So it's starting to show that the hinge is starting to get weaker with time and all that. So I might need to invest in something like that. Toypix has to pick it up so I can buy all the things. LBZ, oh, okay, thanks. Sounds similar to changing the color swatch palette. A little bit, a little bit, but it's a little more, I feel like you get a lot more control with the sliders, but who knows? I don't mess with swatches as much as I probably should. Tragic. That makes perfect sense. Thanks for explaining. Looking forward to that video. Sweet. But again, I think that I think almost everybody has a lightsaber shot they'd like to do. So maybe for a specific action figure photography guide, maybe a little subsection on just how to do basic effects might be something that would be pretty 
pretty okay. Maybe people could use something like that. I do want to touch on Photoshop with all that stuff. So, yeah, who knows? And who knows when it comes to all the apps, what all they'll be able to do in the future, even if they can't do it now. So, yeah, I'm thinking that's a good call. So what I'm thinking for the new guide, I'm thinking of a bunch of lighting setups. I'm thinking of showing a lot of posing, a lot of posing from different angles, just so you can see kind of how everybody looks, arms back here, but then you see them from the back, that kind of thing. And probably some just basic shot setups, kind of setting up dios, talking about foregrounds and backgrounds and all that. I just want to make it, I want to make it an all-encompassing guide. Like the guide that people get when they sign up for the newsletter right now, I like it. I was proud of it when I made it, but now I look at it and I'm like, man, that that thing seems woefully incomplete. Like right now, it was pretty much talked about as a starter guide, but what it talks about for the most part is what you should use or tools that are helpful when it comes to shooting action figure photography. I believe I have some posing in there, but like putty is huge. Putty, never underestimate putty. I love that stuff. Harry, what do you got? See, using a DSLR on the ground sucks to set up and focus a shot. Can't see through viewer or screen. That is true. I've tried doing that. One thing that now I can't even say one thing that helps if you're actually on the ground, you just almost gamble, don't you? It's almost like you have to set the focus to auto and then to get the DSLR to shoot or to be positioned properly is a pain because I usually like shooting things at angles. Actually, I was just talking about putty. One of the things that I've done with putty is I'll put it, once I know that the focus is set right, I'll put it under the lens if I have to have it at an angle so it stands a certain way. Or maybe I'll try and fit it under the camera body and against something else so it's holding everything up just right. Putty is pretty universal with the whole deal. Yeah, I know. I know. I didn't explain that all that much, but I know what you're talking about. I tried taking a shot of Mando versus a bunch of the Jawas. Uh, what were they? Out, out. I can't remember. Whatever the off-world Jawas. They were the off-world Jawas. And I tried taking a picture of that, and I ended up with an okay shot, but it's only through a whole lot of trial and error and far more time than it probably would have taken most anybody else to set it up. I was just really annoyed that I couldn't get it, so I kept pushing until I could. It ticked me off. And there's nothing quite like anger when it comes to motivation. So yeah, it ticked me off. I couldn't do it. I just sat there, and I kept messing with it. And finally it happened. But yeah, I was trying to trying to figure out what else we could do with everything. Is there anything else you guys are having trouble with when it comes to shooting with your smartphones? Anything that you wish you knew how to do better? Because for me, I don't know. I feel like I've kind of, this irritates me, but listening to everybody talk about the droids, I feel like I've exhausted all the smartphone knowledge that I have when it comes to the iPhone. And yeah, irritated. Like what I might end up having to do for this action figure photography guide is put a little iPhone section in the back of it and then start adding like addendum saying, or annex, let's annex, let's call this thing a building, but start adding new sections saying, hey, try this, add this in for kids, add this in for droid users, add this in for them or those or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So there's going to be a lot coming from Toy Picks in the following months and hopefully the following years. Just need toy picks to make me all the money so I can dedicate all the time to all the things, which is insanity. Now, what else do we have to chat about here? We've talked Photoshop. We've talked the photo guide. We've talked, obviously, the camera settings, shooting with the smartphones, all that good stuff. I'm trying to think. Oh, hold on. Don't, don't, no time for thinking. I was thinking people could send, let's see, send you their pictures and you could critique the shots. I mean, we could do that. And I'm not a, I, I would not be a harsh guy. I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be Gordon Ramsay. I wouldn't be telling you things like, 
never touch a camera again. That would be bad and everything else. But yeah, I could I could mess with that. I wouldn't mind doing that as long as everybody else is cool with it. And I know like a lot of people have trouble putting their stuff out there for other people to critique because they just are scared of what somebody might say. And honestly, guys, I just want everybody to get better. That's why I'm making something like this photo guide is I just want you guys to have more fun with your hobby. So it should never be, it should never be so critical on any aspect of it that you stop having fun with it. So I'd be totally cool with critiques. Just know that I would probably sit there and say, well, you know, you could try this or you could try this, but I'd also be the guy saying, but you nailed this, you know, like, so if you're kind of worried about sending in photos, if I were to do something like that, don't worry, we're going to be okay. Even if you just stood a figure up on a shelf and took a quick picture, hey, you probably got to pose right. Or maybe the face is totally clear, you know? Let's see. Tragic. Amen. <laughs> yep. Oh. Let's see. Have fun with it. That's that's what I like to see. I like because truly, like, this should not be like I'm a I'm a really picky guy when it comes to action figures. Like the only reason I have rock and roll is because he came with extra hands. I'm not getting figures that don't come with extra hands anymore. I can't stand that I still have some figures with waist cuts. You know, although although I do have Casey Jones, he has a waist cut. I really like the figure. I just wish he didn't have a waist cut. So I'm a picky guy when it comes to figures, but that's part of the fun for me too. So even if you sat there and you took a picture of a figure that maybe I wasn't the biggest fan of, I don't care. You got that figure because you enjoy that figure. So it shouldn't matter what I think when it comes to that kind of selection. But again, you want me to look at the photo and judge it based on the basis, based on the basis, based on the merits of the photo. Absolutely. I could have some fun with that. You could have some fun with that. We'd all be learning in theory. Because sometimes I'm a very slow learner. It's, it's no good. It's no good. Oh my gosh, everything got away from me. Things started moving. It was weird. All right, guys, so I think that's where we're going to call it tonight. Thank you very much for stopping by. And if you have any questions, remember, well, you know, hit me up on the Instagram or hit me with messages on X slash Twitter, and I'm getting much better at answering. <laughs> So if you have any questions about any of your photos and you don't want to critique them like on a live stream or something, go ahead and send them to me that way and I'll tell you what I see. And from there, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye is no fun. Let's go with see ya. And I'll see you guys Thursday for sure. Until then, have fun. Happy snapping. And now comes the awkward part where I click end stream, but then it makes me click end stream again. And we never know when I'm going to end stream, so I'm going to do this. <laughs>